welcoming viewers around the world, viewers in Massachusetts, and viewers all over the social media. My name is Ronald Bernard, and I am the host for the show called Dialogue with the Candidate. Dialogue with the Candidate is a show that has been bringing by MCTV, which is Multicultural Television Network, in order to inform the public about who are running for office, having the candidate to come to our platform, they can talk about the political agenda, the plan, and how they're going to improve people's life. So today we are glad and fortunate to have with us Mr. Ken Clifton. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ken, for accepting our invitation to the show. So we know that you have been a town councillor since 2008. So that means it's, it's a while. So how about you go and, you know, uh, walk us through your journey, let's, let's say back from St. Kiss and up to here. So you have the mic. Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for your very kind invitation and for being so gracious to me. I certainly appreciate it. And I also want to commend MCTV for its civic engagement and the wonderful contribution that you have been making to our community. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, so I was born on the island of St. Kitts, uh, which is in the Caribbean. And um, my mom was an inspiration. Uh, she was like a political hero in the village where I was raised. Uh, I uh, immigrated to America, still in my early teens. And uh, I finished high school, attended university, uh, graduated from law school. And my wife and I, we've raised our two young sons. Well, one is now a senior engineering student and my youngest son is uh, a freshman who's in, interested in architecture. To some, ex some extent, uh, we have um, had uh, wonderful opportunities. We have been blessed. And so I'm motivated by wanting to ensure that my fellow residents experience the same opportunities, them and their children to get the chance to experience the American dream as well. So after graduating university, I returned to St. Kitts and Nevis, which is the official name of the country. Okay. And I joined the public service. I eventually became the youngest permanent secretary in the government. A permanent secretary is the head of a department. Okay. So still in my 20s, I was heading a ministry, the Ministry of Tourism, Trade and, and Development. And also during that stint, uh, I was um, posted to the United Nations to represent St. Kitts and Nevis, and also to the embassy in Washington, D.C. So it has been um, a wonderful experience. So my wife and I then we moved, after I resigned from the public service in St. Kitts, we moved to Randolph, Massachusetts. Okay. Well, that's great. So that shows the, us a lot of, you know, experience and from, you know, your country, when I say your country, from St. Kitts, Nevis to here. So that's, you know, a lot of work. And we know that, for instance, since 2008, it's about 11 years. Yes. since you are, you've been an elected official. So what, is the, what are your motivations? Well, first of all, when I moved to, to Randolph, I was um, welcomed with open arms. Uh, my wife and I were embraced. Our sons were born here in this uh, country. Uh -huh. And... Um, I was always motivated by, since as a little boy growing up in St. Kitts, to help folks who traditionally have been left out, uh, who have been marginalized. And so Randolph provided the 
perfect opportunity because uh, Randolph is a beautiful mosaic okay. with wonderful people from all over the world. In fact, I was campaigning going house to house just yesterday and within two blocks I had met families that were from at least uh, 25 to 30 countries from around the world. So it's, um, there's a multiplicity of cultures and religions and races and so on that um, occupy this beautiful uh, treasure that is called Randolph. Physically, again, we're perfectly located. Mm -hmm. We're just about 20, 25 uh, minutes away from Boston. Mm -hmm. We're close to the highways. And I'm very confident that if we continue to work together in unison, we could be that shining city on the hill. And so I'm motivated and I'm inspired. Uh, I see myself as sort of a bridge mm -hmm. between the many cultures, the new immigrants mm -hmm. on one hand and town government on the other hand. Because as you would appreciate, um, sometimes new immigrants are not as familiar with the government process. And um, over the years, I've endeavored to get my fellow uh, residents, not just immigrants, to understand that it is essentially a social contract. Mm -hmm. You pay taxes, and government has the responsibility to um, ensure that adequate services are extended mm -hmm. to our residents. Okay, and um, other thing I would like to ask is, we know that based on your, you know, 11 years of experience, you well known on, you know, fighting and trying to address issues that affect the Randolph community. And one of the things that we can focus on, and I would like to know your position, <laughs> it's about, you know, the whole broke, you know, transfer station. So what is your position on that? Uh, matter? Perfect question. Perfect timing. Uh, the fact is, um, for a decade now, we have been fighting to stop the, uh, the Holbrook Transfer Station. The Holbrook sta Transfer Station is really uh, a convoluted way of saying mm -hmm. a dump site will be or is being proposed to be established on the border of Randolph, es essentially in the midst of our population center. And um, it would include hundreds of trucks a day carrying thousands and thousands of tons of solid waste through our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So clearly it would cause a dramatic increase uh, in congestion. And so we have been opposing this um, monstrosity uh, based on the potential impacts on our health, our children's health, welfare, safety, the environment, including, as I said before, uh, traffic congestion, noise, order, uh, pest, uh, you name it. Okay. You name it. It, you know, it would dramatically impact the quality of life of our citizens and so we have been united mm -hmm. in opposing this travesty and I've been honored to have been leading the effort and so on September 18th for the first time in 10 years in a dramatic reversal of fortunes mm -hmm. the Holbrook Planning Board denied site plan for the transfer station which was a magnificent victory for the people of Randolph and for the people of Holbrook and Braintree. But of course, we expect this decision to be challenged by TLA. But you could imagine how the community uh, would have felt after fighting for so many years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have led one-man demonstration. Mm -hmm. I've led community-wide demonstrations. I've led multi-community wide 
uh, demonstrations, including Braintree and Holbrook and so on. We've had several community meetings. Mm -hmm. We've had press releases and so on and so on. Just imagine over 10 years, yeah. which, is over, which is over 4,000 yeah. months I have been calculating, if my math is correct. But um, it has been quite an experience and tribute must be paid to the residents of Randolph, mm -hmm. to the um, residents of Braintree and Holbrook. And I keep emphasizing residents because it's not mm -hmm. just citizens. There are many people or permanent residents or other status mm -hmm. who have been part of this amazing movement to ensure that the health and the well-being of our children uh, is secured. So we've been very happy that there has been a change of fortunes. Okay. Thank you for the answer, um, Mr. Uh, Ken. So I just w would like to remind all the viewers, you are listening to Dialogue with the Candidate. And Dialogue with the Candidate, as I mentioned before, it's a show comes from MCTV, which is Multicultural Television Network. So we invited people who are running for office, they can come here and share their political agenda and their plan to improve people's life and tackle issues that people are facing. So we have with us today Mr. Ken Clifton, and he's running for town council in Randolph. So we're going to continue with the dialogue, uh, Mr. Ken. So. We're going to talk about another issue that uh, Randolph is facing, <laughs> and the issue is going to be about schools. So I know you are familiar with uh, you know, the, edu the school system in, in Randolph in terms of the Randolph High School. So what are some issues the school facing, and what is your plan you know, to tackle that? Thank you for that question, because that is, that is, that's a, an issue that is very close to my heart. But before I get, uh, before I respond, if I may just also raise this very vexing issue uh, that is a, has been impacting the residents of Randolph, okay. and that is the the water issue. Okay, yeah, yes. that's that's a, one of the issue that may, uh, all the kids did talk, and I, I'm glad you're going to be elaborated on that issue as well. Fantastic. So for many months, and some would say longer, mm -hmm. the residents of Randolph have been experiencing brown water, or cloudy water, and some say smelly water. And so this has been going on for many, many months, as I indicated. And there has been social media uh, gossiping back and forth and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. And so I got tired of the residents not been treated, in my view, with the respect that they deserve. And so with one of my council colleagues, uh, Councillor Katrina Hoff Laman, uh, I organized a community meeting dedicated solely to the water issues. Mm -hmm. And so that entailed bringing the experts from the town manager, to the, the head of the Department of Public Works, to the head of the Health Department, uh, town attorney, and our water consultant. I brought them together with the community, and it was one of the largest community meetings mm -hmm. in recent time. So it provided a safe space, a perfect opportunity for residents to get their questions answered, their concerns addressed, mm -hmm. and to offer suggestions. And um, it was highly successful. Uh, obviously, it was very, what I describe as animated <laughs> and very spirited. Okay. So it was quite, a, uh, it was quite a, a dramatic meeting. Uh, on one occasion, one resident, uh, originally from Barbados, mm -hmm. who brought one of his filters that was literally black and so his appearance was extremely uh, dramatic and um, there was a lot of back and forth and that was the idea of having, uh, providing an opportunity for our residents to have 
that direct mm -hmm. inner connection with uh, the leadership of the town and those who are responsible uh, for the water supply. Mm -hmm. And so in, in summary, uh, it has laid the, a path for further discussions so that we could ultimately resolve this particular issue. Okay. Now back to the youth. Yes. Uh, I guess a lot of my history, mm -hmm. perhaps, um, is reflected in how I try to be a good representative. Uh, in high school, I was an athlete. I received uh, an academic and an athletic scholarship okay. to attend university. So I ran track in university and I played football. So I understand some of the issues that our youth are experiencing. And of course, it, it helps that I raise two young men who were boys at, the po at some time. And that mixed with my, uh, my Caribbean upbringing, mm -hmm. where there was tremendous emphasis on, on discipline. And so sometimes I have a very difficult, I have the hard conversation mm -hmm. with the youth of our community. Mm -hmm. I see them like my sons mm -hmm. and, and my daughters. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I always let them know that um, I'm not trying to give them a hard time, but I'm trying to have a, a conversation. And sometimes I have to say things that they might not like, but it's best for them to hear it from me than to hear it from the police or some other uh, authority. And, um, and, and that's why I pushed so hard for many years for the town to eventually build that intergenerational community center which is a $14 million enterprise, mm -hmm. so that our youth can uh, have a safe space and a wonderful environment to engage in productive activities. Again, we don't want that community center mm -hmm. to be just a place where sports are played, but where you could be mentored, where you could be nurtured. We'll have, uh, we've had workshops on how to prepare a resume, how to harness and how to improve your interviewing skills, mm -hmm. which you could probably be given a lecture in that particular <laughs> area. So I think it's a, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for our youth to, um, to engage in much more productive activities. Also, uh, I've established a rapport with much of the youth. Mm -hmm. We've had a number of meetings between our youth and our police department, mm -hmm. which has been very responsive mm -hmm. in helping our youth to understand that the police, they are our brothers and sisters. There are some in the community who would try to create uh, an acrimonious mm -hmm. uh, relationship between the police and certain segments of the society. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, uh, the police plays a critical role in the community. They're not to be feared. Mm -hmm. uh, they're to be seen as an extension of the community. Mm -hmm. And I think to date, um, no institution is perfect, but I think they have been making a wonderful effort in making sure that all of the community mm -hmm. is properly and professionally served. So the youth, I mean, they are mm -hmm. our leaders mm -hmm. of tomorrow. And as I said, I see the community's youth, mm -hmm. just like I see my son mm -hmm. and my, well, my, both of my sons. And so there is that connectivity that I've tried to establish many years. It's not unusual for me to just, uh, I'm walking and I see a couple of young men mm -hmm. and I just engage them in conversation ask them, where are you from? That's Jamaica. I say, oh, huh, so you're a Yadi, huh? <laughs> and automatically he would relax because he would automatically see, we see how we are so connected, how yeah. we are so related. Mm -hmm. And I explained to him that I was born in St. Kitts, but I've been to Jamaica. And um, we're really related. 
uh, to use your word. So yes, the, the youth, uh, they have a critical role to play in our society. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ken, to answer the question, like the challenge youth in Randolph High School facing, because it's, you know, as you say, youth, they are, you know, the future leaders. So let's say you tackle the issues you plan to help them and in the future, in return, that would, you know, make them more engaged and help the society, like having a better mm -hmm. society in the future. So w based on all the, you know, answers you give, you talk about, you know, you go to knock doors and mm -hmm. it's very diverse based on the answer you give in, in, uh, in Randolph. Mm -hmm. So I know based on that, I can say you have strong relationship with, you know, many groups, you know, in, in Randolph. When I say group, I'm talking about communities and ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about your relation with the Haitian community. Yeah. Well, um, I, think, I think everybody pretty much know, everybody pretty much knows that I have uh, a special relationship with the Haitian community. And um, it did not just happen overnight. Mm -hmm. There's a historical perspective and development about that particular relationship. Uh, you know, I can recall mm -hmm. as a young boy uh, growing up in St. Kitts, and my parents would, would teach us, and, and they would tell us about Haiti, how important mm -hmm. a role that Haiti played mm -hmm. in the historical development of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. uh, they would always remind me that, hey, had it not been for Haiti, uh, the islands in the Caribbean, and to some extent, uh, America would not have been, slavery would not have been eradicated mm -hmm. at the time that it was. Mm -hmm. And so for us growing up around the time, Haiti was perceived as the big sister island in the Caribbean. Okay. And so there was that historical knowledge. Uh, we were also very proud that I'm not sure if you're aware, mm -hmm. but one of your first presidents, Henri Christophe, was actually born in St. Kitts before he traveled through Grenada mm -hmm. and ended up in Haiti and became one of your first presidents and became the first king of Haiti. Mm -hmm. So St. Kitts, at least we've given Haiti something. Yeah, okay. So, um, so it, it's that, it's against that backdrop that my representation here in Randolph, which includes representing many Haitian, uh, there was a very smooth transition mm -hmm. because I was prepared as a boy to understand that we were all mm -hmm. brothers and sisters. In fact, a lot of um, members, a lot of my Haitian constituents, mm -hmm. many have thought and still think that I'm Haitian. Okay. You know? <laughs> and, um, I've said to them that, you know, maybe I was not born in Haiti, but we are all Haitians, mm -hmm. you know, considering the, the critical role that Haiti has played. Mm -hmm. And um, I also reminded them that when our ancestors were brought across on those slave ships mm -hmm. from West Africa, across the Middle Passage, our ancestors were dropped off in Jamaica, uh, Trinidad, St. Kitts, Haiti, South Carolina, who knows? So, you know, we're all related, potentially. We're all related and there's this common bond that will never be broken. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, today we stand on the shoulders of great men and women whether it would be Henri Christophe, Toussaint Louverture, uh, Harriet Tubman, uh, Marcus Garvey. Mm -hmm. These are folks who've given their lives. Mm -hmm. And so some of us who are in elected positions, we have enormous responsibility mm -hmm. to make sure that the, the suffering and the ultimate death of many of our ancestors, you know, were not in vain. Mm -hmm. The responsibility enormous. And we must always remember that we're not just representing ourselves as individuals, mm -hmm. but we're representing our families, our communities, and those who laid the foundation so that you and I 
can sit here and have a conversation, a civil conversation about history and life as it stands today. Uh, I think I'm also known for going back uh, since 2010 mm -hmm. when the horrific uh, earthquake devastated Haiti. And one of the very first things I did on becoming a counselor uh, was to, I, I, I co-founded Randolph for Haiti, which was a non-governmental organization uh, dedicated to serving the needs of the Haitian community and Haitians in Haiti. And Randolph for Haiti, we sent uh, three delegations of doctors and nurses and other professionals to Haiti with um, a number of truckloads of medical supplies, mm -hmm. food, equipment, and so on. Mm -hmm. I also used the authority that I had here to extend the library hours mm -hmm. and the town hours so that Haitians living here could get access to communication, to communicate with their relatives mm -hmm. uh, in Haiti and around the world because it was that much of a crisis. I also established um, an office space where uh, residents were able to bring the medical supplies and, and the other urgent uh, supplies that were needed. Mm -hmm. And so we had our own separate space to set up an, an office. So we gave it uh, top priority because it was important for, for me and for us mm -hmm. to uh, do whatever we could do to ensure that we are there for our Haitian community here and our Haitian brothers and sisters in Haiti in their time of need. You know, I, I've also taken the opportunity to mentor a number of um, young Haitian professionals wishing to, to enter the police force. Okay. Uh, in fact, I supported very much the application of the very first Haitian police officer in Randolph, uh, Haitian teachers and, and so on. Because the way I saw it was that everyone needs that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And um, it was more a matter of creating a level playing field so all our residents can get the chance uh, to compete. I've also worked closely with um, a number of uh, Haitian-based organizations, like the U.S. Haitian Chamber. Mm -hmm. We've had a number of initiatives to support small and micro businesses, many of whom are owned by Haitians. Okay. Uh, I've worked with um, Mattapan Tech mm -hmm. out, out, out of Boston. Working together, we've brought uh, services here to Randolph where our residents can uh, take advantage of the free computer literacy classes. Yeah, as you mentioned so, about that, that yes. would have been my next question. So you can go ahead and continue elaborate on it. Wonderful, please. wonderful. So we recognize a number of um, our residents, including new immigrants. Mm -hmm. Some uh, might not have had the chance to to have been adjusted to life here. And so you, you understand how important technology is. Yeah, so having an opportunity for, uh, for folks who might have missed out, give them a second chance to have that skill, mm -hmm. meant a lot to me. So I'm very grateful to Madap and Tech and organizations of that nature. I've also worked with um, close colleagues of mine who've worked for Webster's Bank mm -hmm. to bring financial literacy uh, workshops to help our students and equally important the families, the parents of those students mm -hmm. so that they could become more informed and more educated on some of these issues that would make us better and more productive citizens. So in summary, mm -hmm. the Haitian community here uh, plays a critically important role. I must say also a number of years ago, uh, for the first time, um, 
for the first time, the month of May was formally recognized of, as Haitian Heritage Month here in the Randolph because I thought that it was the right thing to do. Uh, Haitians here to play a critical role and I understand that this was an important month and so I, uh, as president of the council then, mm -hmm. uh, I used the opportunity to formally recognize that month and also to uh, officially recognize the exceptional contribution that Haitians have made uh, historically, socially, culturally, mm -hmm. and so on, not only to our community of Randolph and greater Boston, mm -hmm. but the entire country, to make people feel that they are valued mm -hmm. because in fact their contribution have been valuable. And so it's an ongoing mm -hmm. relationship. The water problems that we have, Haitians also benefit. Fighting the transfer station, mm -hmm. Haitians also benefit. So on the major issues, all our residents benefit. But I just gave you some examples as to where, as to issues that were of specific interest and concern to, um, to Haitians living in Randolph. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Ken, uh, for, you know, uh, the way you describe, you know, your connection with the Asian community and a lot of contribution, let's say, town of Randolph, helping, you know, uh, I am original from Haiti and I am grateful, you know, after the earthquake, Haiti, you know, after this devastated earthquake and you explain, you give example of things you put together, guys, in order, you know, to support people in Haiti and support people here in Randolph. That's really, you know, uh, as a Haitian, I really, you know, uh, admire and honor, you know, this, you know, wonderful job you guys have been doing, helping Haitians either resettle here and they can help their family back in Haiti. So, all the viewers, uh, you are listening to Dialogue with the Candidate. Dialogue with the Candidate, it's the platform FCTV offers to the candidate. They can come and talk about their plan and their agenda. We have with us Mr. Ken Clifton. He's been talking about, you know, uh, his experience he, as a, someone in the public service and what he has done and what he has accomplished and things he has done especially in the town of Randolph. So now we are at the end of the show and we always give this opportunity to all the candidates who come here just to make their case for the viewers of MCTV and viewers all over Massachusetts, especially in Randolph. So Mr. Ken, you have the opportunity to make your case for the viewers. Thank you. Well, I think um, I have demonstrated that over the years I have endeavored mm -hmm. to work tirelessly in representing mm -hmm. the interest of all of my constituents. And let me just clarify one quick point that I don't think myself or any of us are doing any favors to the Haitian community. We're doing our jobs mm -hmm. and Haitians make up a significant percentage of our constituents. So it's only normal for them to be beneficiaries of what we do. I believe that I have led from the front, uh, whether it's the leadership I've shown in terms of trying to stop the whole book transfer station. I also think that I've led from the front in terms of organizing this critically important uh, water forum that we uh, held to ensure that our residents, our residents' voice uh, could be heard. Uh, finally, I would be honored if my constituents would continue to give me their confidence and to support me on elections uh, on Tuesday, November 5th from 7 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock in the evening. And in my district, District 1, the voting is at the high school. But most importantly, please go out and vote. Your vote is your voice, 
and sh you should let your voice be heard. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Ken. So we have had with us Ken Cliff Clifton. He's running for seat, uh, town council in Randolph for District 1. And the election, as you mentioned, going to be on November 5th. And you have the chance to listen to his plan, his agenda, and what is he planning to do for the benefit of the town of Randolph. So once more, you are listening. You have been listening to uh, Dialogue with the Candidate, which is a program with MCTV that brings to inform, to educate you about you know, civic engagement and other stuff you need when you go to vote, you will make an informed decision. So I am the host, Ronald Bernard, so I will see you for the next show. Thank you.